you want the ultimate game challenge, you have to get Action 52. Yeah, it's so cool! Super Mario Brothers! Three! If you were old enough to remember the heyday of the NES, then you might recall the infamous multi-carts, unlicensed cartridges containing anywhere from a dozen games to upwards of a hundred or more. One of the most well-known of these is the Action 52, a multi-cart released in 1991 that contained 52 unlicensed games for the NES. Action 52 also saw release on the Sega Genesis in 1993, and the marketing materials for the game even indicated a Super NES version was planned at one point. The contents of this multi-cart, developed by Florida-based Active Enterprises, are widely regarded as some of the worst games ever made, and Action 52 is routinely a subject of ridicule. Almost all of the games on Action 52 were unremarkable rip-offs, but one called Cheetah Men managed to stand out from the rest. The creators believed the game had the potential to be the next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so they planned for a standalone sequel. However, Active Enterprises folded before Cheetah Men 2 was released, and the game should have never seen the light of day. That is until supposedly in 1996, somebody discovered a stockpile of roughly 1,500 copies of the game in working condition. These games began to circulate and eventually ended up on auction sites like eBay, where copies still sell today for over $1,000. Those unfortunate enough to snag a copy were treated to an abysmal game with some of the worst gameplay ever. If you somehow managed to make it to the end of the fourth level and defeated the boss, the game didn't advance due to a game-ending bug. Most chalked the glitch up to the fact that it probably wasn't finished, but at some point a person came forward saying that there were more levels than just the original four. Were there really more levels to this train wreck, and if so, how did one go about accessing them? The urban legend to unlocking these hidden levels goes something like this. If you happen to own one of the rare copies of Cheetah Men 2, you simply place it into your NES and flip the power switch on and off rapidly. If you're patient enough, eventually the game will start up somewhere other than the first level. One of these random starting points was apparently the fifth level of the game. After reaching that level through this unorthodox method, you can play through and reach the sixth level normally and eventually take on the final boss of the game. Considering how rare and expensive Cheetah Man 2 is, we were unable to secure a copy on our own through traditional means. So instead, we decided to resort to something a bit more drastic. Come on, I played it enough. Play or die. The choice is yours. Do this.
is this gonna happen? This is impossible. Why the fuck did I even put this fucking piece of shit in here? <sighs> I'd staple my balls to the ceiling if I could reach. That's very good, nerd. You finally understand. Given how random this potential glitch is, you could be at this for years, potentially, and never get it to work. Since you figured it out, I'll release you as I said, but before that happens, let me share with you some insight into this glitch. In order to better understand the glitch that plagues Cheetah Man 2, we here at GT decided to reach out to Damien Yarek, an NES engineer who works on NES emulators and custom NES ROMs. Damien writes, The NES can see only about 32 kilobytes of a cartridge's program at a time, and NES games use circuits called mappers to control which page the CPU can see at once. If you've ever opened a cartridge and seen a chip marked 74HC161, MMC1, or MMC3, that's a mapper. The mapper is controlled by one or more ports or locations in the cartridge that the CPU can write to to change which page is visible. Some kind of mappers have a function to keep a half page always visible at once, a fixed bank. Mappers designed for multi-carts, such as the active mapper, do not have a fixed bank so that each game can fill a whole page. Other kinds of mappers have a circuit to clear out the mapper whenever the 1.7 MHz CPU clock signal is interrupted, a power on reset. The power on reset circuit in the active mapper might be poorly engineered. When the NES powers up, the mapper is in an unpredictable state that depends on electrical noise, ambient temperature, and other factors. The data in the console's RAM is likewise unpredictable. In order to start the program properly, each page needs to have a reset stub, or a short piece of code that runs when the console is powered on, or reset, and writes a page number to the mapper's port, so that the CPU can start from a known page. I've read that each level of the original Cheetah Men is stored on a separate page and can be extracted to its own ROM file. And if the code quality in Cheetah Men 2 is anything like what I've read about Action 52, some of the reset stubs might be defective. A defective stub would cause the program to start executing in the wrong page, or to just freeze. As you've seen from the footage and from the previous statement, these games were a mess in terms of their coding. We could just attribute the bugs to the fact that these were unlicensed games that were poorly coded, but there's actually more to the story than mere speculation. During the course of our investigation, we came across an article written by Active52 connoisseur and journalist Adam Erickson, who interviewed a former Active Enterprise employee named Mario, who had a hand in the development of Action 52. Mario shared his experience working at the company and revealed some insight into why these games were so buggy. Mario told us that Vince Perry, the owner of Active Enterprises, wanted Mario and some colleagues to work on a game called Action 52. After signing contracts and then completing training at a facility in Salt Lake City, Utah, Mario began working on the game. Mario doesn't remember why, but for some reason Vince wanted all 52 games completed in three months. Anyone who would try to develop 52 games in three months was asking for trouble. If you don't think Mario's testimony is strong enough evidence, then check out this excerpt from an expose on Active Enterprises and its owner Vince Perry that ran in the Miami Herald back in July of 1993. The article delves into the financial background of the company, but also reveals that Perry farmed out the programming of Action 52 to college students. Even back during the NES days, any respected developer would tell you that a three-month development cycle relying only on amateur programmers would have been a terrible idea. The final part of this tale is that the hidden levels actually exist, and there is a surefire way to reach them. Eventually, the ROM of the game made its way onto the internet, and the programmer named Pakochan took the liberty of going to the game's code and patching it up so the players could finally experience the game without any of the crippling bugs. That meant that when you finally made it past the boss in the fourth level, you advanced to the fifth level rather than getting stuck. Don't get too excited though, the two new levels are just as bad as the first four, and the reward for reaching the end doesn't justify the agony you have to endure. Hakochan also echoes the earlier sentiments about the sloppy nature of the game's programming by adding that he discovered there's a glitch in Cheetah Men 2 that prevents the game from recognizing you defeated a boss. The game does some kind of check at the second and third boss that always returns a wrong value, preventing anyone from advancing to the next level. Hakochan simply went into the code and forced the game to ignore the wrong value and return the correct one so the players could advance in the patched ROM. So as you can see, the hidden levels do in fact exist, but due to a multitude of factors ranging from poor coding practices to a rushed development cycle, they were originally only accessible via the power flipping glitch. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> you just wasted all my fucking time. I just had to play this fucking piece of shit again. Did you see I did the glitches episode where I, I showed that the levels do exist? You know that, right? Like, like they exist? What, do we have to know why they exist? Like if you look at a piece of dog shit, do you have to explain how it came out of the dog's ass? We don't need to know that. Just because something sucks, we don't need, need to know why it's come to be. Fuck this, can I go now? Am I done? Am I done? Yes. Fuck.